Hi, welcome to our ProV Academy series on tech terms, where we sit down with Alistair Chapman and chat through some of the technical terms that just come up again and again in this industry. Alistair is one of the best people I know at explaining complex technical concepts. So hopefully, just by casually chatting with him each one of these terms through, these videos can just help clear up some of the confusion that might be out there on each of these terms. Today, we're talking about clipping and legal range limits, a hugely important and often overlooked topic. So we spend a lot of time talking about dynamic range mm. and then talking about areas that are too bright or too dark, clipping. But what does clipping actually mean? So the, the technical definition of clipping would be when your brightness range has exceeded the range that you can actually record in terms of your data levels. Mm. And of course that could be both in the highlights, so you might have exceeded your highlight recording range or you might have tried to go darker than black and exceeded that and then you clip your blacks, which it is possible. Generally though, we're talking about problems with the highlight range. Yep. Now, an important thing to understand about clipping though is that the point at which you'll reach that point where your highlights become clipped, where they become chopped off, for want of a better word, is different for different gamma curves. As an example, so S-log3 um, is typically going to clip at 94%. Mm -hmm. So you reach 94%, the, the, you can't record beyond that, so you clip. Um, with broadcast television, it's normally 100%, so you don't want to record above 100% because broadcast television will clip above there. But very often for standard gammas, hypergammas, cinegammas, things like that, a lot of the cameras around these days will actually go all the way to 109%. And the reason behind that is that that is our peak level that's possible with a, a codec, with a, a digital codec. So if you have an 8-bit or a 10-bit codec, um, it can go all the way to what is effectively 109%. So first thing you need to know is what's the clipping point for the format that I'm using? Is it 94% mm -hmm. for S-Log3? Is it going to be 100% for broadcast, 109 for a lot of other stuff? And then trying to avoid, if you can, exceeding that. Because if you try and exceed that, then your highlights, are they don't get any brighter. They stop getting brighter at that point, and anything beyond there is not recorded, it's gone. Sure. I think one of the most common issues that I see people having is actually recording with standard gamma curves for broadcast television. So many of the cameras now will record to either 105 or 109 percent, which exceeds the broadcast specification of 100 percent. And you might be a news cameraman and your camera, ma camera might be set to 109 percent and you're shooting and you're looking at your shots and the sky is, it's bright, but it's there, you can see the clouds. Mm -hmm. And your camera's recording to 109%, and then that gets broadcast, it goes to air, and you're sat at home watching it and you can't see the sky anymore, it's just nothing but white. And that's because for the, broad, the broadcaster has clipped that extra 9% off the top completely and it's gone. So you've lost everything that was in that 100 to 109% range. So to avoid that, you need to have a look at the um, white clip settings in your camera. Most cameras have a white clip setting that can be adjusted and bring that down. For broadcast, you can normally get away with about 103%. There's a little bit of, of, of headroom there that's allowed. Um, but you don't want it certainly at 109. You know, that would be too high. Uh, or in post-production in the grading process, you might need to bring those highlights back down to 100% uh, in, in post-production. So that's, that's a very common problem, I see that a lot. The other thing that was a big misunderstanding about clipping is people talk about white. And mm -hmm. in, in, in days gone by, white essentially was 100%, or we used to use that interchangeably as white and 100%. But these days, because we have cameras now with greater dynamic ranges, because we record to 109% and things like that, white doesn't quite mean the same thing that it used to. So if I'm talking about white now in exposure as an exposure reference, stuff like that, I'm not talking about 100%. I'm not talking about the brightest peak of our recording range. What I'm actually talking about, I've got one down here, is this. 
is white. This is a white card and this card here will reflect 90% of the light falling on it. And assuming that our camera operator here is doing his job properly right now, this should be somewhere around 85 or 90% in the recording, something like that to, for it to look right. So when we talk about white as an exposure reference, we're not talking about the brightest thing in the shot. We're actually talking about something that represents a white piece of paper or a white card that would normally be recorded at about 90%. And obviously this is very different then to clipping and to the, the peak output, which is sometimes very confusingly called peak white, mm -hmm. which would be 100 or 109%. Uh, sometimes we, get, we, we make some horrid, horrid choices in terms that we use from an engineering standpoint in television. So this is strictly speaking 90% white, 90% reflectivity white, mm -hmm. and then your clipping point is the maximum level that you can record to, which is generally brighter than this 90% white card. Yep. The other thing that I tend to see quite a lot is that people are often terrified of clipping, as if it's the absolute worst thing that you could yes. possibly do, and you have to protect your highlights at all costs and don't let it clip. Mm. Whereas actually, you know, if you point a camera a light source, for example, it's, it's going to clip. clip. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't avoid no. that. That's right. It's not a problem. It's hugely bright. Yes, I think there, you're right, there is an obsession about avoiding clipping. Now obviously you don't want to, to excessively clip your image, that's, sure. that's not a good thing. So it's a balancing act again. This is, and, and this is actually what an awful lot of good cinematography, good filmmaking is all about, is finding that balance. Mm -hmm. So for me the most important thing in most scenes, in most shots, is the mid-range. It's faces, it's skin tones and all of those. because. Yep the viewer at home will really notice a face that's underexposed or a face that's overexposed. So that's what needs to be sorted out first. If getting a good exposure on the face means that some, something in the background or the sky or a light bulb or whatever is going to be clipped, then I think you just have to face that yep. that light bulb background is going to be clipped. I mean, we can still use old school techniques like graduated filters. Sure. the sky to help deal with that and things yep. like that and those those techniques are still perfectly valid provided it's done reasonably well um, so but but it, yes it has become an obsession and I think very often I see people that bring their exposure down to keep Absolutely. those highlights in and then they ended up with an underexposed mid -ra mid range and shadows and then in post-production you try and bring it up and it all becomes noisy and grainy. Absolutely. So you have to, to strike a balance. And it may be that if you're really struggling with highlights that perhaps you come down a little bit in the mid-range to help, yeah. and that might work. And then the other thing, of course, is if you're shooting with standard gammas, they will have a roll-off in those highlights. So quite often you're not actually clipped anyway. All that, what's happening is that the, the knee or the highlight roll-off is reducing the contrast in those highlights by such a high degree that they've lost their color, they've lost their textures and everything sure. else, so they just largely appear to be... So technically they're not clipping, but from a creative and sort of visual There's point of view, there. we would say that's yeah. clipped because it's not usable. It's not, not what I want in the yeah. shot. It looks ugly. Yes. There's nothing there. And, and this is one of the areas where log is, is quite different because log mm -hmm. doesn't have a highlight roll off at all. Mm -hmm. So even when you clip log, even if you overexpose logs, so, so it's gone, you're, you're trying to record more than you can record, so it's actually clipped, the, the stuff that's just below the clipping point still contains a tremendous amount of picture information, mm -hmm. which isn't there in a standard recording. So actually a little bit of clipping in a log recording does a lot less harm than clipping in a standard recording. Mm -hmm because what's just below the clip point still has texture, still has detail and everything else. And a, a, a typical example of that would be a light fitting, a practical light that's in a light lamp shade, mm -hmm. that with a conventional recording, with a big highlight roll off and everything else, a lot of that lamp shade is just gonna look ugly. It's not gonna have any texture or anything else. The only bit that will act, might actually technically be clipped is right where the light bulb element is, right, right in the middle of that lampshade. But the whole of the lampshade might not look very nice because the highlight roll off is going to be flattening it all out. In log, 
the bit that's going to be clipped is where the light bulb is inside the lamp. So there'll be a part of that lampshade that is clipped, but immediately adjacent to that, you'll have texture, you'll have detail that in post-production through careful grading, you'll be able to bring out and that lampshade will look a lot more natural and true to life. Because, I mean, even in the real world, our own eyesight has a limited dynamic range. You, know, you can't see everything. And it, but it would have been a mistake, though, for the person shooting log to try to bring the exposure down so none of that lamp clips, because you'll then end up with a foreground that's so dark that it's not going to look great. Absolutely. So it's, it's learning you know, about what you need, what you can get away with, what you can't, understanding the way log and the different gamma curves work and everything else, and then making the right judgment and the right decisions over how you, how you compromise the shot. If you bring it down to, to avoid clipping, you're compromising the shot in your mid-range. If you allow it to clip, you can argue that that's compromised to a degree because you're allowing it to clip. But which is the better compromise, losing a few highlights or screwing up your mid-range? Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Keep in mind, we also do a whole range of Pro AV Academy workshops held right here in our UK showroom, where we cover a whole range of topics from audio to post-production, camera techniques, business tips, lighting tips, and many more. The main aim of these workshops is to help our customers learn and develop their skills. And there's something about face-to-face -face training which can just never be replaced by videos like this one. So if you're in the UK, please do get a ticket from the link down below and join us for Pro AV Academy.